What I'm just about to show you is an amazing combination. Oh, come on, guys, you know I had to do it. So I'm not exactly sure how I ended up making this video in particular, considering I was originally planning to just make a pure amazement video, but I'm kind of glad I did, considering this decklist had an absolutely insane win rate, and at one point, I was even on a 9 game win streak. So here's today's deck list. And just a reminder before I get to the deck list, if you guys are enjoying today's video and want to see more content just like this in the future, especially if you're a returning viewer, so apparently about 35% of you watching this are even subscribed to the channel, I means 65% of you haven't even subscribed yet. So if you guys are enjoying this kind of content and want to see more deck lists from me in the future or more videos from me in the future, then leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to the channel down below. Alright, let's jump into this list. So today's decklist is obviously going to be your amazement, combined with your live twin, which actually has a surprising amount of synergy. Basically, amazement likes being in any kind of decklist that can play a buttload of back row, which live twin typically can play a buttload of back row due to all the drawing it does and the good grind game it has. And the other downside of live twin is that they don't really have any high stat lines. Adding the amazement in there means you now have a 2600 boss monster to make this decklist be able to actually finish games a lot easier. People were already trying to figure out ways to chuck big boss monsters in this decklist, and now that BLS is gone, this card might be a suitable replacement. I'm not re really sure whether or not amazement is a better variation of live twin than just playing a pure variation, but it seems to work pretty goddamn well. Alright, so let's talk about the brand new cards. First of all, we have your amazement administrator, Alakino, how do you pronounce that? Once per turn, you can banish a number of attraction traps from your graveyard, then target that many cards your opponent controls and destroy them. This means this card scales really goddamn well. If the game goes long enough and you summon this thing out on turn like 4 or turn 5, you're going to be able to nuke your opponent's field for quite a lot of cards, especially if you've already used one of these and you've already used a bunch of trap cards already. You're going to have a lot of cards to pop with this. Alright. You can only use each of the following effects once per turn. If a trap card is activated, except during the damage step, you can spell or summon this card from your hand. If your opponent normal or spell or summons a monster, except during the damage step, you can target one of those face up monsters they control, equip one attra attraction trap from your deck to that target. So essentially, if you use a trap card, or your opponent uses a trap card, you can grab a trap card, or you can spell or summon this card from your hand, then if your opponent summons out a monster, you can grab a trap card from your deck list, and equip it to your opponent's monster. Which is going to be, of course, your Amaze Attraction Horror House. Target one Amazing Monster Control, or one face up monster your opponent controls, equip this card to it. You can activate the following effect based on which player controls the equipped monster. Target one effect monster your opponent controls, and the gates effects on the other turn, or the more common one, equipping this to your opponent, change the equipped monster to face down defense position. So essentially you're going to be equipping a Book of Moon to your opponent's monsters whenever they try to summon them, if you have this thing on the field. Alright, the final new addition to this deck list is of course going to be the quick play spell card, Amazing Time Ticket. Pay 100 life points apply this effect, depending on whose turn it is. If it's your turn, you can add an Amazement card from your deck to your hand, which is literally only your boss monster. Then we have your second effect during your opponent's turn, set one attraction trap directly from your deck. It can be activated this turn. You can only activate one ticket per turn. So this card is amazing, because during your turn you can search for your boss monster, and during your opponent's turn you can search for your trap card. So essentially, if you want this thing to be a searcher for your boss monster, you activate it immediately. If you want it to be used during your opponent's turn to grab a trap card, you just set it. Which is also really good, because if your opponent has like an MST or a Cosmic, and they activate the start of their turn to remove this ticket, you activate the ticket in response, grab your trap card, and you effectively just wasted your opponent's Cosmic Cyclone. And the reason we're playing three of this, only two of the boss monster, is basically because if you want to have a better hand, so you, let's just say you opened the trap card already, you're not going to want another one on the trap card, instead you're going to want your boss monster, so you search for the boss monster. But if you opened your boss monster and you need the trap card, you can use the spell card to search for it instead. So essentially it means you have a card that effectively is both of them, so it's better to play more of the spell card than just to play more of the boss monster, and three of the boss monster felt kind of bricky anyway, so I cut one copy of it. And that's basically it for all the new cards in this deck list. Now there is a couple of main downsides with this deck, I would kind of like to do some more testing around, so hopefully you guys want to do some testing yourself. And the main one is, this trap card is only a once per turn, and I would really like another trap card to use with this for if we already open one of these, and then we use this thing's effect to maybe equip another card to one of your opponent's monsters or something, 
but there really isn't that many good options in the remaining trap cards. I think the only ones that are sort of viable would be the one that changes the level, I think, which is this one, so maybe this is good against like Xyz decks, but there aren't really that many of them on ladder, so it felt kind of bad. And the other one is the um, Viking Vortex, which when your opponent's monster activates its effect, you can return it to the hand, which, I mean, is kind of useful, but it's kind of bad that your opponent gets to use their effect. I don't know, so it felt like there wasn't is this deck is like one trap card away from being insane, but currently, that's the main downside of it, so... Maybe in the future, if there's any more Amazement Trap cards that could be added to the game, which maybe there is, I don't know. But if there is, that'd be fantastic. Otherwise, for now, I'm just left with this, this deck list, so... Yeah, let's jump to some gameplay showcasing what this deck list can do. Alright, let's jump to today's replays. So today I've got about 8 or so replays to share with you guys, all of which were taken from a nice little spree I had with this deck list, where I won 13 games and only lost 4, which is a pretty decent win ratio, especially considering I had a 9 game win streak included within that, so I think this deck list is pretty good. I would be surprised if it's necessarily better than playing just a standard pure live twin list, but if you want to spice up your live twin list with some brand new cards, here's a really good way to do it. Alright, because there's a lot of synergy here. Basically, this, this art type synergizes with any deck list that plays a bunch of trap cards, as long as there's no sort of locks in there. I really wish I could play this with, like, Altergeist or something, but that has a particular lock in there, so you can't really play the two together. But yeah, there isn't that many, there isn't that many trap decks in Duel Links at the moment, so... This is one of the main ones you can play it with. Alright, so keys to kill something out in the copy of... I've already forgotten the name of these cards. Uh, Leela from the deck. Alright, keys to kill reviving, of course going for the Leela, getting myself a card draw before ending on, or getting some life points first, before ending on just a copy of keys to kill so I can revive during the opponent's turn to pop a card. Activating my search to grab my monster, setting two trap cards, and, and we're good to go. Alright, activates a cosmic. Alright, Senju searching for a ritual monster. Enemy controller stealing my monster in response, I'm going to revive of course. Alright, he's going to summon out a monster, we're going to steal that. And of course, because we activate a trap card, we can now special summon out our amazement from hand. He tries to special summon again, this triggers my amazement to equip an equip spell to it. I can now activate it, flip it face down. Alright. And from there, he's pretty darn screwed. So I can use any of the stuff I've got in field to just go into a copy of Leela. Revive, Nightmare Unicorn, or just Poppy's Monster, or whatever I feel like doing. There's a billion ways I could finish this game here. And yeah, just Poppy's stuff. Alright, on to our next replay. Yeah, I think this deck list is, uh, I don't, I don't even know if it's going to be better than Pure Amazement. <laughs> like, Pure Amazement also wasn't that bad, but I haven't spent too much time with it. I don't even know how I ended up building this deck of all things, why, why I went for this one rather than just playing a pure amazement list, but... I don't know, this looked, like, this looked kind of fun, it turned out to be pretty, pretty decent of a combination. Alright, once again making the keys to kill, getting a revive. Going into our Leela, so I get a card draw. I think the um, ratios for this deck list might not be perfect yet. I think I had to try a few more games to sort of adjust things a little bit. I was thinking maybe I cut one more of the um, Live Twin monsters from the deck. There, there were a lot of hands where I opened multiple Live Twin cards and it feels pretty bad. Alright, uses his Decatron. Oh, de yeah, before he activates this thing's effect, I'm obviously going to revive my card, because otherwise he'll negate this one, which is going to be worse than if he negates the pop effect. Time is the back row, gets the pop it. You're going to enemy controller steal his monster before he can pop it. Which is great, because then I can actually use it to banish a card from his graveyard. Alright, Leela Revive, or Special Summon. Now Leela Revive. He then decides to remove a bunch of cards from my graveyard, which was interesting, because I could still just keep comboing. But I guess each to his own. Bobby's card on the field. Time ticket searching for a monster. This was a big misplay, by the way. I 100% should have set this card. In fact, I meant to set this card. I just completely forgot this card. It's not just a search for a trap card. It's only a search for the trap card during the opponent's turn. So, I was meant to set that thing. 
It's now actually ended on zero disruption. <laughs> ended on a card draw. So there's a chance for my opponent to make a big comeback here if I was a uh, be top deck. All right, Nightmare Unicorn shuffling into the deck. He's on Ice Dragon's Prison. Completely fine because this just triggers my amazement. Bop him in the face and pass. And then just bop him in the face again. All right, so there's a slight misplay in that duel, but I think any uh, any decent player wouldn't have made that mistake. I'm just a complete dumbass. Alright, up against a Ubel player. Six game win streak versus seven game win streak, okay. We've got a match up. Yeah, because I, I think like hands like this seem to be um, fairly common, so I'm thinking maybe I cut one of the uh, live twin monsters, whether that be blue or, blue or pink. Cut one of them maybe, run extra back, or I'm not sure. Maybe that's being a bit too, uh... So I already had a decent win rate with this deck. Maybe it isn't worth cutting. Let me just uh just take the occasional brick, I don't know. Alright. Leader well, reviving, going for a copy of my Kisa Kill. Reviving again, targeting one of the back row. Hits the sewer poly, which is kinda nice. Forces him to use his discard. Yeah, I used to think this this sewer poly thing, I used to think was like really terrifying, but the more I think about it, when your opponent surplays you, discarding and Jewel Links feels so bad, because now he's relying on top decks, otherwise he's completely screwed. Like, if he top decks like a Ubel or something, it's alright, but... Alright, so the Zoo really isn't that scary. Searches for a Summoner's... Oh, yeah, I take Summoner's Art, get to Search. I'm gonna now grab my Trap card. Not gonna use it just yet, though. Mirror Contact does absolutely nothing. Reviving during main phase, popping a card, Book of Mooning his monster. Summoning my card in response. He bombless trap holes it, doesn't really matter. Nightmare Unicorn, getting a card draw, sending his card away. And yeah, he's just dead on field. Alright, on to replay number four. Alright, what was this guy on? This guy must be BLS as well. Although I think this guy's BLS was a bit worse than the other guys. A seven game win streak. I was so sad I didn't get the full ten game win streak, because I would have made a decent thumbnail, but... I ran out of time in the last replay and misplayed. Although my opponent also misplayed as well, so that was the only reason I nearly won, so... Alright. So, fairly shitty opening hand from this guy. But thankfully for him, we're playing live twin, and we don't do anything that looks even close to an OTK. Especially if we're not playing any of the BLS stuff. Which can't really be played with live twin anymore anyway if you want to play a decent back row. Alright, leader the reviving of course, giving us our card draw. Three trap cards, which was pretty good. Plus 2,000 life points. Alright. Activating Super Soldier Ritual, getting a Ritual Summon, summoning a BLS. I'm going to now take control of that for myself, it's now my BLS. Triggering my card to Special Summon itself. Unfortunately my zones are kind of clogged, so I can't use this thing's effect to grab more trap cards from the deck. But that doesn't matter really too much when I already have two good trap cards set anyway. Revive, popping a card. Flipping his card face down. Link something into a Nightmare Unicorn. Reviving, and yeah, he's just dead on field. Alright. This is the final game from the win streak phase, I think. This is the... This is the eighth win. Or the ninth win. Okay, so this is the ninth win. Alright, so I basically just saved this replay to showcase that this deck did go on a 9 game win streak. This wasn't the greatest replay. But it was alright I guess. He book of main one card. Doesn't really matter too much because I can now extend further. 
By the way, if my opponent had to play the trap card there and I didn't have the uh, spell card here, I could also extend with this card, because this thing would special summon itself, then this thing, plus one of your live twins, can still go into any of your live twin extra deck cards, so I could still do a little bit of extending there. If you have the if you have the right materials in graveyard, of course. So it wouldn't have worked, wouldn't have worked out too well in this replay, but in other replays, if I had the um, live twins already in the graveyard, being able to special summon that card from your hand does let you extend further. They're light. The life takes me out to summon themselves off just generic monsters, which is why you use Crackdown in this deck list, is just so nice. It means, it means extending with them can be really goddamn easy, even through quite a few disruptions. Alright, so straight after my nine game win streak, I nearly demoted with this deck list, when the small loss streak and nearly demoted. But we didn't, so... We, we move and we keep going. Alright, of course, leave the revive, card draw, you know the drill. Gaining some life points, making my keys to kill, setting two trap cards with my amazement in hand. Alright, popping one of the back row before his turn ends. Going for another keys to kill to then revive to pop another one of the back row. And as soon as he activates another trap card, of course, it triggers my amazement. My administrator to slam himself on the field also triggers his Altergeist multi faker, which I am immediately going to try and steal so he can't bounce a card to hand. He has spoofing, which is a little bit annoying, but doesn't really matter too much because he actually has well nothing left. Yeah, searches so for his concrete, which is going to do absolutely nothing because it requires an Altergeist card on the field, which this thing is not an Altergeist card. So if as soon as I remove this thing, it's just a loss for him. Yeah, Nightmare Unicorn, get off the field, and he's a goner. Alright. Alright, where are we up to? I think we're up to this guy, I think. Alright, this was a Blue Eyes player playing Yusei for some reason. Not sure about the uh, Yusei tech god on here, but maybe just leveling characters or something. Alright, searches for his two blue eyes monsters. Summons the alternative, summons the other card, goes for his um, Spirit of White. Oh sorry, Spirit Dragon, not Spirit of White, that's the other blue eyes monster. Leela, revive. He's a girl. Revive. Targeting his monster to pop it. This will force him to swap it over now, which means I can now use Econ, steal it, and then link it off. Econ's so good in this deck list. The same reason like Crackdown is. And again, just linking off using generic monsters is so goddamn good. So his monster now becomes my monster and becomes a Geese girl. Two trap cards and a thing set. Or one trap card and a thing set. I think it turns into a trap card. Alright, special summons a Leviathan. No dark monsters used though, so he's only gonna summon back cards. It's a crackdown, which is a little bit annoying. I was really hoping he'd hit this thing, so then he completely would waste it. It's actually this card's actually so good into cards like MST and, and um Cosmic. Because it just grabs you a trap card you can use on the exact same turn. So it baits out annoying back row removal, and then just gives you a trap card you can use, so. Alright, amazement summoning himself. Of course, popping the Lion here so he can't go for a rank 8. Has another special summon in hand. Thankfully, we can get rid of that again or flip face down. And then he concedes. Now, I think if, if he was playing the other Blue Eyes skill there, he could just normal summon the, the last Blue Eyes in his hand. He probably would have probably won that game, so. Yeah, maybe uh, consider swapping back to the correct skill. <laughs> I mean, that guy did have a pretty insane hand, though. Alright, this is the final replay, which is the rank up to Legend 3, I think. Alright, Leela reviving, going for the Kisa kill. Reviving again, ending on the Leela. 
stranding on the case to kill. Alright. MST being used. Unfortunately, once again. Oh no, I didn't have the uh, spell card set, never mind. Alright, now I completely forgot, for some reason my mind completely blanked, and I forgot this thing's a main phase effect, of course. So I was like, I'll just wait to battle phase to use my effects, and missed out on using the keys to kill to revive to pop one of the back row, which is very dumb. Don't do that. So yeah, I missed out on popping a back row here, because I'm a dumbass. At least I don't lose my keys to kill, so I can still revive during this turn. Popping a Book of Moon. Leader being activated, summoning for a card draw. Going for a Nightmare Unicorn, making sure to co-link it for a nice little draw. He's going to Warning Point me, which is completely fine, because this thing can be summoned from hand. Then this card can now use the card in Graveyard, the Maze tra Attraction, banish it to pop cards on the field, and I hit my opponent in the face for quite a lot of damage. And then he concedes. Alright guys, that's going to do it for today's replays. Hope you guys enjoyed them. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. I still have at least one more video based on the new box coming out probably very soon after this one. So if you want to see that, remember to leave a like, remember to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you see you in the next one. Laters. Hey big brother, can I watch Spongebob? Shut up Mokuba, I'm busy flagging YouTube videos to compensate for the fact that I have an extremely small penis. Oh.